phones are the worst thing to ever happen to our kids. So, you know, we, I would start reading books like Glow Kids and Hold On To Your Kids and the, um, you know, books on homeschooling and I'd share them with my friends and we all start talking and it's like, are you going to give your kid a phone? No, I'm not going to give my kid a phone. Let's not, let's all not give our kids phones. So now we've got a huge community where, you know, it's normal for a 15 year old to not have a phone. The school that I run is called Legacy Christian PSP. It's in Southern California. And um, so I started off as a, I was actually homeschooled in the 80s when only weird people homeschooled. Wait a minute. Um, you were homeschooled back in the 80s when, when all the, the mothers had to wear jean, long jean skirts? Yes. You were yeah. schooled yes. back then? I was, yes. Yeah. So On my the parents, prairie. I, yeah. <laughs> my my dad actually would listen to talk radio. He's a huge fan of yours. He actually introduced me to you years ago. I started listening to your podcast. Um, so many years yeah. ago. How many years ago so could many. it be? I haven't been doing this that long, but thank you. Forever. But thank you. Um, no. But anyway, so he was listening to the radio one day, and it was um, Dr. James Dobson was interviewing Raymond Moore. And he was talking about homeschooling, and my dad was just listening to this thinking, wait, you can take your kids out of school? You don't have to send them to public school? You don't have to send and, them to yeah. Marxist indoctrination camps? Really? Right. Really? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so he convinced my mom. My mom was really against it. My um, brother was going to a private Christian school at the time. And so she went actually to the teacher and was like, my husband wants me to homeschool. Isn't that crazy? And the teacher was like, no, actually, you should. <laughs> and that wow. was the last thing my mom expected to hear. Um, but basically, she said, you know, my brother is, was a quiet kid and he was falling through the cracks and he was getting punished by um, for not completing his work um, and he was told that he couldn't go out for recess and play. And so my mom really just started to uncover this and she took a leap of faith and then they yep. started homeschooling. So that well, was kind I mean, of just to thing. sum up, if I can, what you were just saying is that that there's sometimes and I, and I think this is rather often. But the point is that, you know, we have a, like a one size fits all education system. And even yeah. in Christian schools, oftentimes there's there can be a semi woke agenda. I have experience. I sent my daughter to a Christian school, and the stuff that came back home with her sometimes I was like, "What? What? Like, are you are you kidding me? Like, you mean that the Christian teachers at your school are this dumb that they're teaching you stuff that I that I know is wrong? And that can happen in Christian schools. And so there is no doubt in my mind that the best solution. For, for everybody, pretty much, is homeschooling. That would be my first choice. And when people ask me about what do I do with my kids or what do I get, homeschooling is almost always mm -hmm. the best solution. This is not to put down all Christian schools. Some of them are good. But it's just interesting to me that your brother was in a Christian school and you your, your mother, as only parents can, had a sense that this is not ideal for him. Right. So um, I think that the traditional school model there it's it's not the best it's not ideal it can work in certain circumstances but really it's not the best uh, most ideal way to teach a children teach a child um i had the privilege of actually studying at oxford university it was just a study abroad program for one semester wait you which know, which university oxford university in england oxford yeah. never heard of it i mean <laughs> is that an oxford no, cloth no. shirt or a herringbone yes. Okay. <laughs> it's no Yale. It's so, no Yale. But well, thank is, God. When I was there, you know, it's considered one of the greatest universities in the world. And um, when I was there, literally all we did was the the Don would, you know, assign a book to read, high quality literature. I would read the book. I would write a reflection essay. And then the next week we would go in and I would read this essay out loud one on one. That's the best education our world can offer is reading high quality literature and having discussions. So parents think, oh, I can't do what they do in the classroom. Oh, the teacher's doing all this stuff. And, you know, now with, with technology being infused into the classroom, a Chromebook in front of every student, and we're supposed to think this is good for our kids, they can't even read a novel, a classic novel. Everything is so, they, is so high fat. Um, fast pace. I read a really great book called Glow Kids, and it was um, oh, it's all about how Glow Kids. Um, glow Kids. Yes. Glow <laughs> Kids. 
Yes. Yeah, it's well, written okay. by a neuroscientist. It's written, uh, yeah, yes. It's a um, fascinating book. Yeah, it is a fascinating book. But basically, he talks about how screens are affecting our children's brains, and they are they are not doing anything good. So, you know, why are schools all of a sudden, everybody's on a Chromebook, everybody's on an iPad? Um, but anyway, so back to the whole Oxford thing, that is the best education our world can offer. And what are we doing for our kids? So home people think they can't homeschool. Well, can you read to your kids? Can you pick up, can you find a list of excellent literature, read it out loud, and then talk about it? Folks, I hate to interrupt, but I just don't want you to miss any of the content we're putting out on here. We've just got some amazing stuff. So would you do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button so we can make sure you don't miss anything. I promise you, great stuff coming up. Hit the subscribe button, thank you. At the heart of all of this gets our definition of education, which is why homeschooling is so important. It's not just about passing on information. That's a very secular, enlightenment mm -hmm. view of education. A Christian view of education, it's, it's about raising young men and women to be ladies and gentlemen, to have wisdom, uh, to understand that the Bible is the word of God. I mean, all of that stuff ought to be and used to be at the heart of all education, um, mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's not anymore in secular education. And it's, you really cannot get an education if you avoid these basics, the basics of is there a God? Who am I in relationship to God? What is God's will? And that used to be, you know, you mentioned Oxford. I mean, all the universities were founded by Christians centuries ago, mm -hmm. and this was at the heart of everything. And it's been lost. It's all been bleached out and secularized. So this fake mm -hmm. idea that so many Christians have that, oh, I, to get a real education, I need to go to that secular place, or I need to go to a place that's already in a sense, compromised with the secular enlightenment view. Uh, homeschooling yeah. stands utterly against that. And again, it's why I'm a fan. Legacy Christian, uh, PSP.com is the website. Legacy Christian. What is Legacy Christian? This is a network. Tell us about le what, what this is. Yeah, so actually, so my parents being the pioneers that they were, they decided to start this, um, you know, they call it a co-op. Um, but it's really a lot more than that. It really is a, a school. Um, so it started 27 years ago, and then I started helping out with it a few years ago to kind of, you know, bring it into <laughs> the current century. Because, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I wasn't really clear on this. So your parents are Bill and Marilyn. Stevens. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now I get it. So you're the daughter mm -hmm. of pioneers. Yes, I am. And so, but it's interesting because I wanted to teach in the public school system and I did. And um, I'm not really sure why. I think I, I watched Dangerous Minds and thought I could make a difference and an impact on this, you yeah. know, broken system. And I quickly realized I really, I couldn't. I mean, yeah. I showed up literally 23 years old, public school, Title I school in California, which means it's low income. They put 36 students, 36 eighth graders in each five periods. I had over 200 students I was trying to teach English to at 23 years old. Yeah. Um, and so it was just an impossible I can't scenario. believe you survived. You're alive. <laughs> I You're alive did. and you look fine. I don't know how that happened. But that's yeah. like, you know, that, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah, 23. It was, it, it's like they may as well have awful. fed you to actual wolves. The idea <laughs> of, of sweet I, you. I looked about 15 at the time too, so yeah. that didn't help either. Um, but yeah, so just going into that scenario and then really looking, taking a close look at it and thinking, can I picture my kids here? Um, and I and I couldn't. Um, so when I when we had our first child, I actually quit teaching and um, stayed home. But I worked for a public charter school, um, which was really amazing um, to be able to work from home um, as a teacher. So that was really neat. But um, so then we had four boys and I just really started doing this homeschool thing and building this incredible community of like-minded parents. Um, you have to be so intentional nowadays because, you know, you can think everybody's getting along. And then what happens is I'm telling you, Eric, phones are the worst thing to ever happen to our kids. So, you know, we, I would start reading books like Glow Kids and Hold On To Your Kids and the, um, you know, books on homeschooling. And I'd share them with my friends. We all start talking and it's like, are you going to give your kid a phone? No, I'm not going to give my kid a phone. Let's not, let's all not give our kids phones. So now we've got a huge community where, you know, it's normal for a 15 year old to not have a phone, a smartphone. 
um, to not have social media. We call them porn machines. <laughs> but um, I mean, look, but, let's anyway. let's be honest. Uh, phones yeah. are a gateway to every kind of dark thing. And the idea that children, I mean, it's like feeding your kids poison or, or letting your kids go to the, the candy store where they're getting poison and just going, well, you know, everybody's taking in poison. It, it affects right. us on a deep level. And so we need to take a stand <laughs> against it. And one of the ways to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is to homeschool your kids. If you want to raise kids who love Jesus and who understand things from a biblical perspective. So uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of amazed really every time I talk about it, but please keep going, Christina. Yeah, so anyway, so back to my parents started it um, 27 years ago, and now it's just grown. We have four campuses, and how it works is the, the, the parents choose the curriculum that they want to, want to use. We recommend, we, we recommend high-quality curriculum, um, and then the kids all gather once or twice a week for um, classes, and that's really where... I think back in the 80s, what was missing when I was doing it was that consistent community. Um, I like to say that we there are good things that schools offer. We like to take all those good things and offer that without all of the bad stuff. With the Marxism um, and the pornography, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what a great idea. How do you do that? <laughs> Yeah. When you show up to our campus, you know, <laughs> you will see hundreds of teenagers talking, connecting, having fun without one cell phone in sight. Yeah. That's a really hard stance. That's that crazy I talk. I don't believe you. No, that's so great. No, that is so great. They're talking, they're talking about like Dostoevsky though. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like they're, they're just like, they're discussing the Russians. You know? Imagine if like, Dostoevsky had a smartphone. None of his yeah. books would have been written. Crime and punishment, yeah, crime and punishment. never come into re into existence if uh, if only That's Dostoevsky right. had had a laptop and a smartphone. The whole system um, of education in America, uh, the whole system of uh, of higher education, of 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 education from from the beginning, preschool all the way out, has bought into this you know a John Dewey secular elitist uh, anti biblical worldview. <laughs> And you have Christians right. sending their kids into that world and then wondering why it's it's so hard uh, because they're, they're, they're again, they're going with the flow and the flow is very, very bad. And it's our job uh, to say, no, we're going to go against the flow and we're going to join other parents who are going against the flow. And there are plenty of them out there. We need to link arms. And that's what you all are talking about. Um, with LegacyChristianPSB.com uh, is, is networking with other Christians so that you're not alone in the way that, that your, your parents, Christina, were really alone, pioneers in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is, it's so much easier to do this when you're joined by um, fellow Christians, the local church. Um, you know, so you're so if you go with the flow from preschool, you're, you're doing that. Then it's public school, kindergarten, which still I question kindergarten. <laughs> um, do we really need it? Right. Well, Five kindergarten old, was <laughs> preschool before preschool. Yes. I mean, there was do no kindergarten. And then they came up with this idea, which was it was effectively preschool. It's like six yes. is too mm -hmm. is too old. Let's get them in at five. Yeah, they're teaching yeah. letters and sounds effectively for three years. It's pretty ridiculous. But anyway, and teaching then... Teaching kids to hate school. Is yeah, they're so <laughs> bored out of their minds yeah. yes. because learning is, is just boring to them. But um, anyway, then what does every parent, even Christian parents, even do around in between 10 years old and 13 years old is they give their child a smartphone. When are Christian parents going to say no to this? I... It, I seriously like when I, it, are they not reading one article about or a study? Listen, of let, what let's boil it down. Children? They don't have the guts. Let this this. I mean, look, this gets to my book letter to the American church. <laughs> you get a lot of Christians who they've got everything except courage. They've got everything. They've got all the theology, whatever. But when push comes to shove, when you got to live out your faith and it's going to cost you something, somebody's going to look at you funny. They're like, oh, I yeah. want everybody to like me because that's in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Right. And then they're just going to go along. What is everybody else doing? And listen, I've been guilty of that. But then you get to yeah. repent, folks. If you got it wrong, <laughs> you get to repent. God wants us to repent of, of, of going along with this because you're quite right, Christina. That's what's going on. Well, and the other thing is that there are better options than an iPhone. Okay. There are safe 
cell phones. Have you heard of these things? Have you heard of gab phones or pinwheel phone? Yeah. You probably have not heard of these. Are these there diesel are safe- powered or wood burning? <laughs> <laughs> They're safe phones for kids Nat- that gas. can only talk and text. Okay. Can children handle <clears throat> calling their friends like we did when we were kids? Yes. That is not the problem. Can they text their friends? I would say mm, most most times, yes. However, the the whole boy girl texting thing in um, I think as teenagers is really it's it's causing the demise <clears throat> of our kids creating healthy relationships between boys and girls. They do not know how to communicate, how to con- have a conversation because text messaging is very insufficient. You don't get to know someone on a deep level by texting. There are no emoticons in the Bible. Exactly. I, by the way, I just exactly. thought of that right now. Isn't that true? There are no emoticons in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. You can quote me on that, Eric Metaxas. Yeah. Um, Chris, that's, times, write that down. That's very interesting you, what you just yeah. said, Christine. I, had, I really hadn't thought of that, but, and I didn't know I had not heard of these phones. Say it again. What are they called? Sorry. Um, so Gab, the Gab phone. Yeah. Is, G-A-B. They're great. G-A-B-B. G-A-B-B. Yep. Uh, Gab Wireless is what it's called. Yeah. Pinwheel is another one. And Helio? then Bark. No, pin, pin wheel, P-I-N. Oh, pin wheel, sorry. Yes, W-H-E-E-L. Um, and then also Bark, so B-A-R-K. They have a very advanced um, phone. So these are phones created that are safe for our kids. And when I ask parents when they're going to get their, their, their kid a phone, most of the time, oh, well, I have my old iPhone. So here, I just gave it to them. Why? What are they trying to do? Save a few hundred bucks? You know, I mean, it's just like when you can, and then there's the parent controls. Those don't work. Kids get around them. One kid at your school knows how to get around the parent controls. Guess what? Everybody's around the parent controls. And then haven't these parents heard of total depravity? What's wrong with them? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Day, you know, being molded by strangers, their minds are being mold, molded by strangers that you don't know. And then you, they get home, and you're gonna, they're gonna really tell you everything. No. And then when they get home, most kids are on screens for the rest of the afternoon. And Christian parents, parents need to wake up and stop. Well, it's like it's for me. I kind of uh, liken it to if you were gonna give your kid a room, and you're gonna design the room for your kid, and give them everything that they they wanted in the room. So you have like a video game system. You got a phone, you get all kinds of stuff. But then in the corner is a stack of Playboys. And you're like, oh, don't go there. Uh, just focus on this stuff. This is the good stuff for you. Here's a Bible. I'm going to set the Bible right next to the Playboys, actually. Don't even, don't look at this. You know what I mean? That that entire wall is not for you. But and the rest play, of it. And, play, so, and Playboys like, would be a nice way of putting it. Uh, you know, play, yeah, Playboy is point, practically yeah, exactly. a home and garden compared to what, what kids are being exposed to. Well, that's true. It is, it, right. No, the, the level of toxicity of what kids are being exposed to. This is why parents need to take a strong stand. It's why I want to have the two of you on that anybody who who says I'm a Christian, um, folks, you need to take this seriously.